Hello there. In this video we're going to introduce another distribution on continuous random variables which is referred to as the gamma distribution. Now there may be some notations that you may not be familiar with. I'm just going to introduce them and how to calculate them in Desmos for example and then we'll look at the actual distribution and how to use it. Alright, so before we actually get into the discussion of the gamma distribution, I'm going to introduce to you the gamma function. So unless you've taken an integral calculus sequence, uh, then you may not be familiar with this function. But the gamma function of variable x is defined to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the power x minus 1 e to the minus t dt. So a couple of special properties about this that you definitely should know is pretty much one important property, and that's how it relates to the factorial. Namely, gamma of n is going to be equal to n minus 1 factorial for n in the natural numbers. So for example, if I have, say, gamma of 5, this is going to be the same as 4 factorial. So 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. So what the gamma function does so 0 factorial is equal to 1, 1 factorial is 1, 2, and so forth, and it extends. So what the gamma function does is it pretty much extrapolates this. So you can talk about, say, gamma of 1 fourth, 1 fifth, and all the values in between. So it's what we call an analytic extension of the factorial function. So things like 1 half factorial can have, you know, some meaning, I guess, uh, because you can use gamma of 3 halves to calculate that. But I'm not going to get into the details of what one-half factorial means and actually why that's not a good statement to say at all, but Desmos will calculate this perfectly fine. So that's pretty much all you need to know. So with that, let's talk about the gamma distribution. So the gamma distribution has the following PDF, and that's given by f of x is equal to lambda to the power of r divided by gamma of r times x to the power r minus 1 e to the minus lambda x. And this is going to be true for x is greater than 0. And it's going to be defined to be equal to 0 for x less than or equal to 0. So a couple properties about this. So the expected value of x is going to be equal to r divided by lambda. And the variance of this random variable x is going to be equal to r divided by lambda squared. Now these two formulas should look vaguely familiar to you. And that's because this distribution is related to another distribution. So let's actually begin by looking at that first. So theorem. Let r be equal to 1 for the gamma distribution. What type of distribution will we get? So that means f of x is going to be equal to lambda to the power of 1 divided by gamma of 1 times x to the 1 minus 1 times e to the minus lambda x, and this is going to be true for x greater than 0. So we have lambda to the first is just lambda, gamma of 1 is just 0 factorial, then we have x to the power of 0, e to the minus lambda x, which is the same as lambda times e to the minus lambda x for x greater than 0. This distribution should look familiar to you. This is the exponential PDF. So, the exponential PDF is a particular example of the gamma distribution, plus it has a couple other distributions in it as well. So that's one of the important parts, or connections, uh, to the random variable uh, x. So is this by coincidence? The answer is no. So this is the very important theorem which actually makes the gamma distribution useful. So let's assume s is a set of random variables, x1, x2, all the way down to xr. Now let's assume this is a set of exponential with parameter lambda random variables. Then g, which I'm going to define to be equal to the sum of these random variables, where k ranges from 1 to r, so x1 plus x2 all the way down to xr, 
So this variable, g, will follow a gamma distribution with parameters lambda and r. So lambda is that rate constant uh, associated to the exponential random variables. And let's assume all of them are going to be the same. If they can be different, then that changes things up a little bit. Um, and r is how many exponential random variables you're actually adding up together. Let's look at a basic example that a lot of you should be able to sort of understand to be a gamma random variable, uh, assuming that you've already had some exposure to the exponential random variable in the past. So let's suppose that wait time uh, to get a driver's license at the DMV is exponentially distributed. with average wait time um, you can make up your own number here uh, say 35 minutes let's assume and let's suppose that you are the fifth person in line So let's pretty much get a scenario here. So we have person one. So a person one can pretty much wait anywhere from zero to infinity minutes uh, in the DMV until they get serviced. But on average, it's going to be 35 minutes. And we're assuming that distribution is exponential. So there's some shape associated with that. Then you have person two. So person two can wait anywhere from zero to infinity minutes. Again, the average wait time is still said to be 35 minutes. And of course, there's a distribution associated with that graph. Note here that this graph and this graph are the same because the parameters lambda are going to be the same as well. And they're assumed to be exponentially distributed random variables. Of course, P1 and P2 will not necessarily be waiting the same time. Uh, in general, most likely they will not be. And you're going to continue this all the way to person 4. So person 4 is going to, of course, wait anywhere from 0 to infinity minutes. On average, 35 minutes and there's going to be some distribution associated to that. So the time it takes for person 1 is going to be a random variable. I'm going to call that time x1. This is going to be x2 all the way out to x4, where x3 is in between. So each of these are random variables. Therefore, the time it takes, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, until the fifth person comes in line, which is us, also is going to be a random variable. So, therefore, since this is a sum of exponential random variables with the same exact rate parameter lambda, that means t follows a gamma distribution. That means t follows a gamma distribution with parameters lambda is equal to 35 minutes and r is equal to 4. That's how many exponential random variables we're adding up. So with all these things, we can ask a couple questions. For example, what is the expected wait time for us, the fifth person in line? What is the variance for that time? Because if the variance is too large, then we might not want to wait in line. What is the probability that we have to wait more than 120 minutes? On average, it's 35 minutes per person, uh, and there's four people that we have to wait. So if we multiply up those... Uh, uh, parameters, lambda, 35 minutes, uh, it could be pretty large. Ah, and also remember, for an exponential random variable, lambda is not the average. One divided by lambda is. So just a quick uh, shout out for that. So what is the probability that t is bigger than or equal to 120? So maybe we can't wait. So if that's really large, maybe we don't even want to go into the DMV at all. And what's the probability that t is less than 40? So let's go to Desmos to answer all of these questions. All right, so I've taken some time to input my PDF. So remember, this is lambda to the r over gamma of r, and gamma of r is the same as r minus 1 factorial. In Desmos, there is no gamma function, at least currently when I make this video, uh, so we need to use the factorial representation for that. 
x to the r minus 1 power times e to the minus lambda x, and this is defined for x greater than 0. We're defining our average to be 35 minutes. That means lambda, or lambda is going to be 1 over 35, or beta is going to be 35, depending on the notation you're using. We're summing up four exponential random variables, so r is going to be equal to 4. So what I've done here is I've pretty much scaled this out, so I can pretty much look at the distribution. Notice that my horizontal axis is representing our time random variable, and pretty much it looks like we're going to be waiting anywhere from 40 to 350 minutes uh, in order for us to be served. At least that's from the graphical perspective. So if we want to find the expected value, that's of course going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x times f of x dx. And in this case, it looks like we're going to be waiting on average 140 minutes. So let's assume that we also want the variance. So of course the second moment is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times f of x dx. And the variance is going to be equal to the second moment minus the mean squared. So if we want the standard deviation, that's just going to be the square root of v. So a standard deviation of 70 minutes in this case. Or you could use those formulas r divided by lambda and r divided by lambda squared to get the values of the mean and variance directly. Either one is perfectly fine. The only issue is that these are approximations, not exact values. Because we're not going to infinity, we're going to something close to it. So what's the probability that you have to wait more than 120 minutes? So what is the probability that the time you wait is more than 120 minutes? Or at least 120 minutes, but continuous, they're the same problem. So that's going to be the integral from 120 to infinity of my probability density function. So there's a 55% chance that I'm going to have to wait more than 120 minutes. What is the probability that I have to wait less than 40 minutes? So at least from this graph, it looks like that's pretty much not going to be possible, at least not in practice. So we can find that answer find the, from the integral from 0 to 40 of a probability density function. And we have pretty much a 3% chance of that occurring. So this is pretty much how you calculate probabilities, expected values, and variances of the gamma distribution. Remember, L is going to be equal to your rate parameter for your exponential random variables, and we're going to be assuming that they're all the same, at least for now. And r is going to be the number of exponential variables that you're adding together, or the ones that pre pretty much precede you if you're the next one in line. So let's discuss a couple more properties that are going to be extremely useful for the gamma distribution and its applications later. So we're going to look at a slight modification of the gamma distribution. So now we're going to let lambda be equal to 1 half, so on average 2 minutes or however you look at it. And we're going to let r be defined to be equal to k over 2. So we're going to slightly change our gamma distribution around to get a new function. So if you go back to our PDF, f of x is now going to be equal to, so we're going to have 1 half to the power of k over 2. So that's going to be lambda to the power of r all over gamma of r. In this case, that's going to be gamma of k over 2 times k to the r minus 1, which is k over 2 minus 1, times e to the minus lambda x. So let's do some modifications. So this 1 on top can pretty much be ignored, because 1 to any power is going to be 1. And this 2 to the k over 2 can go in the denominator of this expression. So we can rewrite this instead as f of x is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of k over 2 times gamma of k over 2 times x to the k over 2 minus 1 times e to the minus 1 half x. And this is going to be true for x is greater than 0, and it's going to be 0 for x less than or equal to 0. So this distribution actually has a lot of applications when we start talking about hypothesis testing for the variance and all the things associated to that. For example, the standard error associated to the sample standard deviation for the population standard deviation. So this distribution actually has a special name, and it's called the chi-square distribution. So chi-squared distribution. So any, dis any variable x that follows 
this type of distribution is called a chi-square random variable. And of course, since this is a PDF, more so a special case of the gamma distribution PDF, then you can of course calculate probabilities based upon that. We're not going to get into the applications of the chi-square distribution now, we'll wait until a later time. But at least here, you can start calculating the expected value, the variance, and probabilities associated to a chi-squared random variable as well. Hope you enjoy.